Hello, I'm Chef Matisse. Growing up and working in local restaurants and eventually graduating from the Culinary Institute of America in Hyde Park, New York, has given me a food epiphany, a cooking show about the future of the American diet. Buy local, eat organic according to the seasons. It's really very simple. Buying local means if you buy from local farmers directly or markets that do, it's likely your food is very fresh and probably harvested that morning. Fresh foods will contain the most flavor, vitamins, and minerals. Eating organic means no pesticides. It's a commitment to your health and to the health of the environment. What's the point of eating delicious, healthy food if you're polluting the environment in the process? Cooking according to the seasons guarantees healthy, delicious produce at a fraction of the cost. Now, following these three key points will encourage you to have a variety of healthy foods in your diet as well as becoming part of nature's changing seasons. On my show, we will explore what the Bay Area has to offer, from farmer's markets and wine tastings to fishing boats and guest chefs. So get your mise en place ready, because I'm going to take you on the adventures of Chef Matisse. Hello, welcome to the adventures of Chef Matisse. Today we're with a mushroom expert and we're out here, um, we're going to look for mushrooms. I'll let you introduce yourself. Uh, I'm John Brown. I'm uh, the science minister for the Fungus Federation of Santa Cruz and I've agreed to do this for you so that you can uh, find out what's growing uh, in our spring woods. In, in, around in Santa Cruz? Right Santa now, Cruz. Wh where are we? Uh, we're up in the hills. Uh, we go up in the high hills because uh, I, can, I can get here. I don't want to tell you exactly where we are because uh, I don't want to give it away. It's definitely a, a, a mushroom hunter's secret where you go mushroom hunting. It's definitely a mushroom hunter's secret. We don't give places like that away. We do tell you what you can find. Uh, we can tell you what kind of trees to look under, but we don't tell you where to look. It's really easy for anybody to go to a place somebody p points out to them. It's really hard to find a place. So our camera woman spotted a mushroom. Uh, what did she find? That's uh, Amanita calptrata. It's a very popular mushroom up here. Um, it's one of the few mushrooms that grows in this area that grows above the ground. It's a wonderful mushroom to find. It's delicious. However, it does belong uh, to the group of Am the genus Am Amanita, which has our most deadly poisonous mushrooms in it. Can, can you brush it off and so we can take a look, or should we you shouldn't betcha. pick it? Let's okay, brush it off. All right. Wow, it's a beautiful looking mushroom. Uh, the characteristic fe features of the mushroom are that it has a wide uh, velar patch from the universal veil on it. Uh, beneath that, the margin should be striate. I don't think the camera can pick that up. Uh, there's a partial veil underneath that, and uh, the universal veil remnant on the base of the stipe is really large and encompassing. And then if we cut the stipe in half, the inside of the stipe should be hollow or full of a gelatinous material or full of white fibrils. And what we're trying to do is find a little orange speck, because chanterelles don't like to show themselves. We look for little orange specks in the, um, in the woods. Now, I, I see a little something hinting at me right in front of That's, us. That looks like a chanterelle. Uh, if it was a swillus, you could probably find it above the ground, or, and you wouldn't find as much poking out. But that looks like a chanterelle. Let's take a look. All right. and here we uncover it, and that really looks like a chanterelle. That, so that, that's a chanterelle? That looks like one. Let's pull it out. It could be anything until we pull it out. And when you pull it out, there it is. That's what a chanterelle looks like. That's definitely a chanterelle. And I think if we look around, we might find some more. How do I know that this is well, chanterelle? I don't want to get before, poisoned. Before you move, I see you're really close, and it looks like there's another one over there, and I don't like it. Wow. Wow, there's another one. Look at this. This is incredible. Look at this. I, I just, we just got another one right here. That is simply okay. amazing. It's so a let's big... Let's get down to how you identify a chanterelle. Okay. So tell me, tell me about the gills. Let's start with the gills. There aren't any gills. Okay. The, the gills are really, they're folds of tissue, and the... Uh, uh, the spore-bearing layer is in, the, is in that tissue. Fold-like gills, uh, cross-sections between the gills, um, generally the golden the yellow the color. Tree. Chanterelles follow a different pattern in, uh, in their uh, fruiting than do, other than, than do most mushrooms. Most mushrooms come up, 
they might live for a week and they die. Chanterelles come up, they live for a month, two months, three months if they can. They live for an extended, extended length of time, and they produce very few spores, but they produce them over a long period of time. They're a wonderful mushroom to find, particularly when they're big like this. Generally, if you find them and they're little tiny ones, it's a nice idea to leave them for a while, to give them a chance to either get bigger, particularly if you know what they are, you can come back and pick them when they're bigger, but you give them a chance to spore a little bit so that you can spread and uh, get more mushrooms. Ooh, I just saw a mushroom. There's a mushroom right over there. What do we got? Okay. Now, when I go hiking in the Santa Cruz Mountains, I run into this mushroom a lot. Yeah, you do. It's uh, it's a pretty common one. Let's check it out. So, what 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 exactly is this? This is Rusula silvicola. I think it's silvicola. Oops, it broke on us. I think it's silvicola. Uh, one of the fun things about Rusulas, and I always like to do this in my ID classes, um, or when I have people out and I'm uh, teaching them how to identify mushrooms. I'm going to have you taste a piece of this mushroom. Uh-oh, I'm getting a little scared now. Now, you can be scared, but you have to chew it up just for a second or two, and then you spit it out. You don't want to swallow it when you taste a mushroom that's raw. You want to chew it up just a little bit, get it, and then spit it out. And I'll taste it with you, so you don't have to be too worried. Here you go, grab a piece, and I'll grab a piece. Come on, come on, <laughs> you can do it! I get a, like a peppery. Yeah, it's so spicy, hot. peppermint, yeah, hot. Spice, it's cayenne. Hot. Yeah, it's cayenne hot. It's smoking. Uh, the professional key. I, I prefer the professional key. This is one of the few uh, genera in uh, in guild mushrooms where I prefer the professional key over what David did. So if I ate this, is something bad going to happen? If I actually got it, I mean, if you ate it raw, something bad would probably happen. <laughs> You'd probably be really sorry you ate it raw. Yeah. Um, some people, uh, Europeans, pickle these mushrooms. Uh, apparently, when you pickle them, uh, the the spiciness goes away. Um, this one is, is is ruined. It's uh, really in bad shape. The bugs have been at it. Um, there are a few uh, species in the Russulaceae that are good to eat. Uh, Russula zeremplina group has four or five different species in it. I don't know if you can see them, but uh, pull them out. Wow, what did you get here? This is Craterellus cornucopioides. Also, uh, also known as? Uh, Trumpets of Death, uh, Horn of Plenty, lots of names. Trumpets of Death for a wild mushroom is a pretty creepy name because most people are paranoid of wild mushrooms. But they're just black, and they're, they look like horns, so they're Trumpets of Death, and uh, that's what they're called. The uh, French call them that. Trump, Triumph de Mort or something like that. Trump know. de Mort, and these are I don't speak these are a specialty. I uh, see some more growing yeah, there there's too. A couple more here, and if you get a picture of how they are in the ground, you can see. And one of the things that I have to point out is that these are really hard to see. Uh, you saw us trashing through the bushes. We did that for a long time. We didn't just uh, do it for a minute or two. It definitely took us a long time to find these. Yeah, and, and these are big. You can see that they're up, but they're like holes in the ground. They're hard to see. Now, uh, you go up north of here, you go up to Salt Point, I have some friends up at Salt Point, and they said they picked a shopping bag full of these in wow. 45 minutes. I yeah. didn't realize how many mushrooms are just around if you're looking for them. Yeah, we found a lot when we hiked up that hill and we decided to take that shortcut, too. <laughs> we found a lot of them staring us in the nose. It was really fun. I had a great time. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. I really much. appreciate this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.